Turn with me to Joshua, Joshua chapter 13 and also Joshua chapter 23. Father, I pray you'd speak to every heart this morning. Thank you that you brought us together as a spirit-filled church family, bringing the kingdom of heaven to earth. And Lord, I pray you'd help us to know our corporate assignment and our personal assignments. Lord, we thank you that you're a God who speaks to us individually and brings us together corporately to do something that we could not do by ourselves. And I pray by the Holy Spirit you would speak to our hearts in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to thank God, first of all, for all he did in 2017. Could we give him just a clap offering for all the good things he did? He did some amazing things in 2017, opened all kinds of doors, blessed us in many, many ways, and our mission will never change. We are a spirit-filled church family bringing the kingdom of heaven to earth in our jobs, in our workplaces, in our schools, in our, every, every place that we go, we want to bring the kingdom of heaven to earth. Jesus told us to pray, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And this will be a great year of advancing. To advance means to cause to move forward toward an objective. It will be a year to advance corporately and individually. I'm going to talk about a corporate vision and about personal vision that we all need. Joshua 13.1, it says, now Joshua was old and advanced in years, and the Lord said to him, you are old and advanced in years. God tells the truth. And there remains very much land yet to be possessed. This is my 32nd year as being the pastor of Sunrise Christian Center. I'm thankful for all the places God has brought us, but I believe that we're at a, we're at a, we're at a place where there's going to be huge doors that are going to be able to open us because we prepared ourselves. We've been ready. It's really important that we're in, in a year of preparation, and, and we don't worship angels, but at the same time, we don't neglect angels because God sent them to minister as heirs of salvation. We, minister, we worship the Father and Jesus alone through the power and the person of the Holy Spirit. But he's, he's, he's sending angels this, this year, I believe, to open doors. He gives his angels charge over those who fear him. He encamps about those who fear him. And he also gives his angels charge over us to keep us in all our ways. So it's very important to realize that this year the Lord is going to fight for us. It says in Joshua 23, 1 to 3, if you'll turn with me there, Joshua 23, 1 to 3. Had it bookmarked, and I think I pulled the bookmark out. Joshua 23. Come on, Joshua. Now it came to pass a long time after the Lord had given rest to Israel from all their enemies round about that Joshua was old and advanced in age. And Joshua called for all Israel, for their elders, for their heads, and for their judges, and for their officers, and said to them, I am old and advanced in age. You have seen all that the Lord your God has done to all the nations because of you, for the Lord your God is he who fights, has fought for you. The Lord has fought for us, and the Lord's going to fight for us this year for our possessions as you read on. It was about inheritance. God has an inheritance for you. God has something that he's prepared you for. God has a purpose in your life. And it's so important that we're intentional in this season. So let's look at the corporate vision first. First of all, in our corporate vision for this year, I think it's very important to realize it says in Acts 1.8, but you shall receive power after that the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the earth. And I believe that this year God wants us to be witnesses in Everett, in Snohomish County, in the state of Washington, in the nation and the nations. It doesn't say, and you shall receive power to start Bless Me Clubs, or you shall receive power so you can just get all excited and have goosebumps. He says, you shall receive power to be witnesses unto me. And I think it's very important as Pentecostal, charismatic, evangelical Christians that we realize God wants to use us to touch people's lives. See, I, I love when, when I'm in a, in a crusade in the Philippines and all of a sudden this young man's heart is open through a prophetic ministry. A prophetic word that comes to him and he, he, he gets smitten by the power of God and he, he comes in an atheist and goes out a spirit-filled Christian. That's, that's, that's called bringing the kingdom of heaven to earth. I like it when I'm walking through the building right here, not only in the Philippines but in the city of Everett and I, I see a painter painting and the Lord says, just join yourself and befriend him. And now he's been coming to the church and giving his heart to Christ and been water baptized in his mother. See, that's bringing the kingdom, that's being a witness unto him. Yes, we worship, and yes, we like to get blessed, and yes, we like the anointing of God, but if that's all it is, we might as well just go to heaven because it'll be like that all the time. What are we supposed to do on earth? We're supposed to be witnesses unto him and bring other people into the kingdom. It's a year to make disciples. 
It's a year to advance the kingdom through our relationships, through our businesses, through our neighborhoods. And preparing sunrise for opportunities. This is a year when we're going to see that you might want to write this down. It's a good saying. This is a really good saying. Opportunity is recognizing when God's timing meets preparation. God's, God's timing, really important. We're in a place in time. Opportunity is recognizing when God's timing meets preparation. God's been preparing us as a body corporately to, to enter into things. He's been preparing us. He spoke to me in 1996. I didn't understand what he meant. How many of you had God speak to you and, and have tried to get your mind around how is this ever going to happen? Well, now I'm walking in the middle of how it's happening. In 1996, he spoke to me very clearly and said, I'm going to make you a father of many nations. I understood what that meant to Abraham. I didn't understand what it meant to me. But now everywhere I travel around the world or local area, what happens is, like Bishop Frank, people come to me, I hardly even know, and say, we want you to father us. That's going to be one of my assignments in my last days of my life over the next at least 32 years. I'm going to live to be 100 or die trying, as Peter Wagner said. <laughs> so the next 32-year assignment is, to, is part of it is to father. And, and so I had to prepare myself. I had to, I had to learn, how, how can I be a better father to my children? How can I be a better father to my grand? How can I be a better father to the people of this church? How can I be a better father to leaders? And I prepared myself. See, if you don't prepare yourself, you're going to miss the opportunities. If you don't prepare yourself, you might decree and declare and you know, prophesy. And, but if you don't prepare yourself practically to move into those things, you're, you're going to miss the opportunities when they come. Remember the five wise and the five foolish virgins? The five wise virgins were the ones who lived intimate enough with Jesus and had prepared themselves so when the door of opportunity was being opened, they could walk through the door of opportunity. The ones who didn't have an intimate relationship with Jesus in the last days, when the, when the doors were opening, it was a picture of the last days because it says in, in uh, Matthew 25, 1, and then... The kingdom of heaven will be like this. The then is in the last days. We're in the last days. This is how the kingdom will operate. People who are intimate with Jesus will have opportunities open to them, and when the doors are open, they'll be prepared and ready. They'll have oil in their lamps. They'll have an intimate relationship with Jesus, just like Mary of Bethany. She was the only woman that got to anoint Jesus for his burial because she had an intimate relationship with Jesus. All the others came to the tomb with all the stuff, but see, they, they weren't prepared at the right time, and so they missed their opportunity. So it's very important this season that we prepare ourselves, that when we know the word of God, I'm often asking people, okay, if God told you, how are you preparing yourself? If God told you you're going to be a writer, are you taking writing classes? Have you outlined your next book? Have you, have you been studying and asking someone to teach you? Oh, I, I want to be a better mother. Are you asking some mother that you admire to say, could you teach me how to be a better mother? Could you train me how to do what you do? If you're in a business and you want to, are you training somebody in the next generation? I've challenged some of our businessmen. Who are you training with all your skills? You know, America's dying because many of the young people have not had people that had mentors like they had in past days. They didn't have apprentices that trained them. Who are you teaching to use the skill that you have? Who are you training and raising up to take your place? Very, very important the day that we live. So be, be ready to be prepared. I believe part of the opportunities of prayer are going to come as the house of prayer grows, as man prayer. This is the year of 120 men, men. This is the year of 120 men. And don't tell me it can't be done. It can if you'll just wake up and show up. And let's encourage one another. When you're, let's not tear each other down. Let's not shame each other. Let's build people up. You know, we're going to all be challenged to do things. I don't know about you. Do you do a lot better when you're encouraged? you a lot better when you're trying to do something you've never done before, when people encourage you? So like I, I told my wife, you know, sweetheart, I got to get in better shape and I'm, I'm, I, I can't just talk about it. So I said, when I get back from the Philippines, we're going to start walking. She's wanted me to walk for years. I said, then please, sweetheart, when I do it, don't tell me I told you. <laughs> hey, if I finally do it, encourage me. Don't make me feel bad that I didn't do it sooner. Tell me you're doing it. So yesterday I walked 3.4 miles with my wife. First day back. And she added to the bonus, we went shopping. I took her out shopping and a dinner because I just got back. And by the time of the day, I had walked five miles yesterday. Now, I, I do get to take Sundays and Wednesdays off. I get two out of seven, but I'm going to walk. My goal is to walk at least three miles, five. That's at least 15 miles. I already .4 over, so it'll be at least 15.4 this week. And see, I told you what my plan is, so now you can, you can hold me accountable, see, because I've got a plan. Now, you can talk about losing weight. You can talk about getting in shape. You can talk about, I started drinking apple cider vinegar. I started a few days ago. You know what? I'm, before I went to the Philippines, I, I went to get a test, and they said my blood pressure was as highest it's ever been. 
And I realize you can just say, oh, we'll just pray. Yeah, you pray, but you know what? You also need to take care of yourself. You know, prayer isn't an excuse for you to live sloppily and ask God to show up when you can do some things. And so guess what? I'm going to be walking. If you see me walking around the city, you don't know what I'm doing. And, 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 and don't say, we've been waiting for you to do it for a long time, Pastor. Say, way to go. Way to go, boy. Keep it up, boy. You encourage me. Encourage the boy. Don't put the boy down. So let's encourage each other. I don't want to shame you, man. I want to encourage you, man. Show up, and God's going to do something. He's going to do something very powerful in the House of Prayer, the Women Crush Wednesday, the Mother's Prayer Movement, uh, the House of Prayer. We need more people because we're setting an atmosphere for signs and wonders and miracles. Doors are being opened as you're praying. You're affecting the nations. Do you know how many people that they call into the House of Prayer, they call into man prayer? And all around the world, they're, they're telling us about the answers to prayer, and they notice a difference when the people in this place pray. So I want to encourage you, get involved in the House of Prayer. Come and give an hour a week. Come and sign up and get involved and watch what will happen. It's a chance for progress. And get involved in a small group. Get involved with people. People say, well, I don't know how to get involved. Well, then call the leader and ask them how to get involved. You know who the in people are in the church? The people that are involved. I've had people say, well, I'm not part of the in group. They're part of the in group. You know why they're the part of the in group? Because they got involved. We all started the same way. We knew nobody. I didn't know anybody when I started this church except my wife and my kids. I didn't know anybody else. When God gave me an idea, you know how you get involved, you start to go. And yes, it feels funny at first. And yes, other people, but no matter what you try in life, that's just part of life. And if you really want to get involved, get in a small group. Get in a uh, men or women's prayer group. Join man prayer. Join uh, the women's ministry. Join the men's ministry. Join being a Sunday school teacher. A lot of you should be teaching. You're sitting with all this knowledge. You're sitting with all these gifts and abilities. I pushed Heidi, and I pushed Jim, and I pushed Sue, and I said, you have so much knowledge and so much abilities and, it's, you know, in your first try when you're standing up sometimes in front of two or 3,000 people, it's not that easy. But I was proud. They all got up there and they rocked the house. Heidi prophesied over the governor. Jim had never taught in front of anybody. And he, he sounded like he'd been a seasoned teacher. I said, boy, you're so good, you're going to have to do that again. He goes, not. <laughs> I go, yes, you are. And see, I, I have a habit as a leader of wanting to push you. You know, and I, I want to push you to, because there's a lot in you that you can be pulled out of you. And you just need that opportunity. You need that place to step up. And it's a, it's a chance for progress. It's a year of opening doors. And we're going to advance the kingdom by making disciples, by witnessing, by telling someone about Jesus. Ask God this year, who, who are the people I'm supposed to witness to? Show me who in my workplace, who in my neighborhood, who in my family, who is someone? Show me throughout the day and the week, Lord, who is someone you want me to witness to? We've got to find people to witness to, and we're going to, have, we're going to, have to do church planning. It's really important that we do church planning. The Bible is very clear that we're going to be advancing the gospel. For years, I've heard people say, if there was a Sunrise Christian Center on Woodby Island, I'd go there. If there was a Sunrise Christian Center up north, I'd go there. So you know what? Hopefully within one year, we're going to be starting Sunrise Christian Center in Mount Vernon. And that will be one of hopefully many because we, we want to spread the, the joy around. You know, there's very few spirit-filled churches anymore. You know, almost every church is a seeker sensitive. We're going to make you feel good. We're going, to, we're going to just come here and serve you and make sure that you have lattes and ice cream and whatever else you want to eat. We'll even put chairs where you can lay back and go to sleep during the worship service. And, you know, we're not a seeker sensitive church. We're a God sensitive church. We're here to worship God. We're here to please Him. We're here to make Him happy. I have people come and say, I didn't like the worship today. And I said, Good, it wasn't for you, it was for Him. <laughs> Worship's for Him. But we've trained a whole bunch of seeker-sensitive baby Christians, and thank God for everybody who gets saved. But I'm just telling you, you have something very special here that you don't realize, and I don't always realize, that we're a spirit-filled church family bringing the kingdom of heaven and earth. Mike and Jamie, why don't you just stand up, Mike and Jamie? I've never done this before, but this is a couple that we've been training to start Sunrise Christian Center in Mount Vernon. They went through a rigorous training in Canada. I mean, they got, they got barbecued, grilled, cut open. John said, man, I'm glad I didn't have to go through that stuff. John went up. They asked one of the elders, so he sent John up. He's known him for years. And they went through a, a boot camp. It's more than a boot camp. I think it was boot camp, you know, three years of enlistment, and then, you know, you're already in the reserves by the time they get done with it. I mean, they, they rip you to smithereens. I mean, they just dissect you, cut everything you do wrong, they tell you. 
they assessed, uh, from what I understand, that Mike and Jamie got one of the got about the highest rating of all the eight couples that were there. And see, we're going we're to start Sunrise Christian Center Mount Vernon. Hopefully, we'll start maybe Sunrise Christian Bellevue and Sunrise Christian Center Centralia because we want to we want to we want to spread the the this this out all over the place. That's part of our vision and our dream. So you might be praying for Mike and Jamie. They've already moved up to Mount Vernon. And, it's interesting how all that happened. You can ask them. We have parking lot and buildings and facilities. We're getting ready. We're preparing. We're buying the parking lot because we expect more people to come. And, you know, we're, we're going we're gonna to release a goodness army. I have a heart to see the goodness army totally released throughout this area. Wilberforce had 70 philanthropic ideas. You know, you only heard of two of mainly about slavery and also about um, child labor. But he had over 70 things he's championed. You know what he said? Let's make goodness fashionable. I want, I want you to get the T-shirt, too. It's called the Goodness Army. We're going to talk about it more. And I'm going to handpick 12 business leaders, and I'm going to begin to pour into those 12 business leaders. And with those businesses, we're going to help build a, we're going to help build a goodness army across this region that will deal with education, political issues, will deal with homelessness, will deal with things. And I believe that God's going to raise up a goodness army. He's going to partner the church with key kingdom businesses that are going to release the power and the presence of God in this region, in this city, in this area like we have never seen. So hopefully some of you will sign up and join in. I'm going to handpick him. I'm praying about it because that's the way you're supposed to do it. And you watch what God's going to do with the goodness army. We're going to advance the kingdom through worship. Amen. God wants to bring the worship to a whole new level as we worship the Lord. I want to encourage you on your way to church, worship the Lord. On your way to church, pray for the worship. Don't, don't sit there and say, well, the worship team wasn't very good this morning. You are part of the worship team. You are all commissioned in Jesus' name. You are now part of the worship team. I remember when Graham Cook came and said, quit drawing off the anointing of the pastor and quit drawing off the anointing of the worship team. You be worshipers. You come prayed up, anointed. You add to the worship. You you begin to pray and declare, Lord, cause your presence, just break open things. I want this place to be permeated with the presence of the living God. I want people to know that God is alive and well. And many people that are not even are believers come and say, I don't believe in God, but the presence of God is in your place. And that's what we live for, so that they'll be touched and God will be honored and glorified. So pray over the worship. The Father is seeking worshipers in John 4, 24 to worship him in spirit and truth. And it sets an atmosphere for signs and wonders and miracles and healings and deliverances. It's been the hallmark of this place for 32 years, the healings and the signs and wonders and the miracles that take place. Let's advance the kingdom through our gifts and our talents and our skills. You have gifts and talents and skills that you can use. You know, Jim, Jim is, he, he, he built this for us since he's retired. He's also going to be doing the parking lot. He's been working on the parking lot. When we got to Philippines, here's, here's Jim Lane. He's walking through the building. They, they put him with the elder that was in charge of building their building. And you know, we just walk in and say, boy, this looks really nice. And Jim's saying, man, the beams are, you know, they're, they're going to roll. I couldn't even understand the stuff they were talking about. They're walking, they're over in the corner looking at this thing. He goes, isn't that amazing? I go, what, you mean the corner? And they go, yeah, look at the way they put the trusses and the beams and and see, and I said, I challenged Jim. I said, Jim, who are you going to teach in the next generation your skills? Who are you going to teach in the church how to use these abilities? Or we're not going to have people that will build in the future. And who are you training to paint? Who are you training to do what you do? Who are you training your skills? And you've got gifts and abilities and skills, and God wants to use them. And how are you going to enlarge your skills? After Jim got done speaking, it was incredible. And his wife got up and gave a testimony. He said he spent five years learning a CAD program so he could advance in his career. Where are the people that are going to take five years to advance their skills? When God sent me back to school, I never dreamed I would be standing before the rulers and the leaders around nations that I am. But I realized that part of the preparation was getting my master's and my doctorates in transformational leadership. Because I needed skills. I didn't have skills. Some of you have incredible skills and incredible opportunity to expand your skills and increase your influence with your gifts and with your abilities. And God wants to do that this year. He wants to use your natural and your spiritual gifts as well. And you have so much to give. You don't even realize how much God's put in you. Do you realize people all around the world, all around this community, are looking for people like you? Please don't just come and sit in church. Please don't just come and enjoy the services. Do that, but then when you go out, release something to someone else. Make a difference in people's life. Make a difference in your neighborhood. Make a difference in your community. Make a difference in the nation and the nations, and watch what God will do. That's all about a corporate vision. Now, what about a personal vision? Are you doing any personal planning for 2018? Do you have a personal plan? Have you got God's plan for you for 2018? He actually has some intentions for you this year. I want to encourage you to get a a notebook and start to write down thoughts that God's going to give you over the next few weeks. 
You need to do spiritual preparation. I want to encourage you to seek the Lord. Spend some time praying and fasting either with your wife, if you're married, or your kids, or yourself, if you're single, or find someone that you have a friendship with and say, we want to pray and fast and seek the Lord. We want to ask God what he wants to do and ask him, is there anything in my life? Is there anything that you want to remove from us? Is there anything in my life? Is there any sin in my life I need to repent and turn from? Is there any stubbornness? Is there anything where I've just kind of got locked into a rut where you want to, you know, kick the rut out? Ask God to speak to you about those things spiritually and watch what he'll do. And then also uh, declare God's promises over your life. Find someone who will partner with you this year or a group of people that you'll just get together and begin to declare God's promises over your life. You know, God has promises. He's given you words. He's given you prophetic words. You wore a good warfare according to the scriptures and the prophetic words that God gave you. And speak into your circumstances. Speak against, you know, there's going to be there's going to be an assault. There's going to be, the enemy's going to try and push back on Christians. There's been great strides in this nation. And you better be ready. God's going to fight for you. He's going to send his angels and give them charge over you. But you better be ready for a battle. The bigger the battles, the bigger the victories. There's going to be some really big victories this year. So you're going to declare those promises. And what about natural preparation? Have you developed a plan, you know, for uh, just, just a natural preparation of plans of, you know, what are you going to be involved in? Who are you going to be involved with? Um, for me, a natural plan was I'm going to take care of my body. So the plan was, you know what, I'm going to get my rear out of bed. I didn't feel like getting out of bed after being from the Philippines on my first morning home and go walking. But I walked 3.4 miles with my wife. And it was really nice. I felt really good at the end of the day. I, I accomplished it. So I've done one. I'm one for one. I get Sundays and Wednesdays off. God said those are church days. But, you know, Thursday, I, on Monday, I got to go walking again. Good job. Good job. Thank you. See, I like the encouragement. I'll tell you, women, men do a lot better with encouragement. If they wash the dishes, don't go. I did it for 356. They go, way to go, sweetheart. Keep it on up. You want them to keep washing, keep, keep building them up. If you don't want them to, just tell them, well, I've been doing it for three years, and it's good you did it once, but, you know, I've done it. If you do that, he, he's not going to wash the dishes next day. You say, way to go, and tell everybody what a great job he did washing the dishes. He'll, he'll become an incredible dishwasher. Just, just a tip. And remember, remain under authority. It's so important to be under authority. There's so much lawlessness. There's so much individual people. Your personal vision should tie into the corporate vision. They're not all disconnected. They're not all, we're just doing our own thing. God connects us supernaturally. Our personal vision should connect us to corporate vision. And who's going to assist you? Ask God, who's going to assist me in this plan? Who's going to help me? You know, I told my wife, you need to help me with this. She's wanted, she's wanted me to walk for years. So I said, I'm walking, sweetheart. So really, really build me up and we go walking. And we had a great walk. She likes to look at houses. I'm not so much a house looker when I walk. I want to get the miles over, but I'm enjoying looking at the houses. She goes, let's walk down here. There's some nice houses down there. I go, who gives a rip about houses? She does, so I just look at houses. I'm like, let's get to the next block. Hurry up, sweetheart. We got to walk faster. Look at the house. Let's get this thing out, right? Men just want to get her done. She wants to look at stuff. She said, oh, we should do that to our front yard. I go, oh, yeah, that, that, that sounds good. Let's go. Right? You got to have a natural plan, but she's encouraging me. She cheered me on. She said, way to go. And who's going to assist you? Who's going to build you up? Let's make this a year of building people up, not tearing people down. Let's make this a, when someone hits the mark, we cheer them on. We don't just say, well, it's about time you did what was right. You know what I mean? Those people. You find you something right, and they want to shame you when you do it right. Yeah. Hello, let's just remove shame, yeah. all right? Yeah. Shaming people doesn't help them. Yeah. Encouraging people builds them up. So let's have people that will assist us. And what about your mental and emotional preparation? I want to encourage you, don't be intimidated. The enemy's going to come against you this year and try and bring sickness, disease. You can do all kinds of stuff, but stand. Don't let him, be, don't let, don't let him intimidate you. Stand in the name of Jesus. And when you've done all to stand and put on the armor, stand. It's a year to stand and don't let the enemy intimidate you. Don't let circumstances intimidate you. And have a mind to work. 2 Thessalonians 3.10 says if you don't work, you don't eat. That's the principle we need back in our nation and we need to teach people. You know what? You don't have a food, you don't have a job, you don't have a home, then we need to get you a job. And if you don't have a job, we'll teach you how to start a business. You're not going to help somebody if you just keep handing them food and keep you know, enabling them to keep living a lifestyle that's not good for them. And yes, we love homeless people, but I want them to get in homes. And let's do something to make a difference with homeless people where they get transformed. They become people that get about God's business and his purposes. 
And let's not be distracted. There's going to be an enemy's greatest attempt is going to be to distract you from your assignment. Don't be distracted. Write out the plan. Write out the plan and say, you know what? This is God's plan for me this year. I'm not going to be distracted. I'm not going to be pushed off to the right or the left. I'm not going to be distracted this year. And no one finished your assignment. What is your assignment? See, when God told me in 1996, I started to line myself up with being a father. Didn't know what it meant at first. I knew what it meant for Abraham, but I didn't know what it meant for me. But God started to speak to my heart. And I realized that was an assignment. It says in John 17, 4, I have glorified you on the earth. I have finished the work that you gave me to do. What is the work he gave you to do? You need to ask him, what's the work you have for me in 2018? What's the assignment you have over my life? And don't just do something because someone invited you to do it or asked you to do it or said they need somebody. Do it because you know this is the call of God on my life. And you know what? If, if, if you're called to do it, don't think everybody else is called to do it. Or don't try and get everybody to do what you're doing because they might not, maybe they're not supposed to be doing what you're doing. There will be people that will help you and assist you that have the same call. Those are the people you want to join yourselves with. And I want to put a big emphasis on this. What are you going to do for your family and what are you going to do to rest this year? Most people in America don't plan any of those things. What are you going to do for your family and what are you going to do to rest this year? What does God want to do in your family? What does he want to do in your marriage? What does he want to do with your children? What does he want to do with your grandchildren? And how are you going to rest this year? Are you going to plan any rest? Are you just going to let the, you know, keep on rolling like the good American, you know, dream, just work yourself to death? And maybe take a week off. Are you going to plan times of rest to be alone with God, plan times of rest to be with your family, and do something fun, okay? It's all right to have fun as a Christian. Three of you agree, okay. It's all right to have fun as a Christian. And do some stuff that you have fun. Are you planning any fun this year? You planning recreation, recreation, recreation. Yeah, I'm having fun. I'm walking with my wife. It's getting, it's getting more enjoyable. And I'm going to have fun losing weight. And I'm going to have fun being fit. And I'm going to have fun being ready to do what I've been assigned to. You know what? But I want to encourage you. Plan some rest. We've planned some family things this year. We're going to have a lot of fun this year as a family. And it's taken a lot of work. It's taken a lot of preparation. Fun doesn't just happen. You can plan your fun. And what do you do? Do something you like. You know, you, you get tired and weary. Go, if you like to golf, go golf. If you like to swim, go swim. If you like to go mountain climbing, go mountain climbing. If you like to go sit in Starbucks and read a good book, I was thinking of Grace and Sue Lane. I, we should buy Starbucks stock every time we... Every time we turn around, what would you like to shoot? Can we go to Starbucks? We've been to Starbucks three times already today. You like some, I don't want any coffee yet. I'm, I'm trying to keep my, my blood pressure down. I don't need any more coffee. I'm limiting only two cups. They're bigger cups, but they're only two cups a day. <laughs> no, I, I've only been doing two a day. That's what I saw an article once that said, the doctor told me I only drink two cups of coffee. I'm down two cups, and the guy had a coffee cup about this big. I'm just drinking a little, co- I'm only doing two a day. That was another thing. See, I'm planning. I'm going to not drink more than two cups of coffee a day. I've only had one, so I have one more today, and that's it. Way to go. Are you planning? Are you preparing? If you're not preparing, you're going to miss the opportunities that God has for you. If you're not getting yourself ready, remember, this is the thing for the year. Very, very important. Very, very important. I want to read it. Make opportunities, recognizing when God's timing needs preparation. Are you prepared? You can say it, sing it, declare it, but have you prepared yourself spiritually, naturally, mentally, emotionally for what God wants to do through you? If you haven't, you're going to miss opportunities. There's big opportunities this year, bigger than we've ever seen. And remember, say no to doubt and fear. The enemy will use fear and doubt to try and stop you from God's assignment. We've got a big vision as a church. It's going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. Our mission never changes. Our vision always evolves and gets bigger and bigger and bigger. So, Father, I pray that you would help us as a church family. You'd help us to be witnesses unto you. And there might be somebody here that's been listening or from listening to the sound of my voice on the Facebook Live, and you said, I never surrendered my life to Jesus Christ. I'll tell you, the best way to start out the year to advance is to give your life to Jesus. I did it 42 years ago. I was a drug addict and alcoholic, and Christ came into my life, and I realized he was real that he lived, he walked, and he died on a cross, and he rose from the dead, and that he was the only one that could change my life, and that he loved me with an everlasting love. And he removed my shame. He removed my sin. 
He didn't say, and, and you fix yourself up and then I'll love you. That was the message I heard so many ways all my life. If you do good, if, if, you, if, if you perform, we'll love you. I know people didn't mean that, but it was just the way I felt all my life until Christ came into my life. And he changed me. You might be here today and say, Pastor, I've never received Christ, but something spoke into your heart today. It was the Holy Spirit nudging you. Someone invited you, and you never surrendered totally to Jesus, and today you want to surrender your life to Jesus and give it to him and turn from going your own way and turn from any sin and turn to Christ. Is there anyone like that with heads bowed nice? Go just wave at me if that's you. Just wave your hand real high. I'm not going to take a lot of time today. Just wave your hand. Is there anyone? Say, that's me. Wave your hand high. That's you. Okay, what I'd like you to do, since no one waved their hand, I want you to stand up, and I want you to get in groups of two or three or four, and say, Lord, show them your plan. Show them your assignment for 2018. Show them where they fit in the corporate vision, and show them where they fit in their personal vision. And write it down. And when you write it down, just like I told you I'm walking, let me know what you're going to do, because I'm going to pray for you. I'm going I'm to be your encourager. I'm going to stand on the side of the road and say, walk. I'm going to stand on the side of the road and say, you can witness. Just like I pushed Heidi to speak and I pushed Jim and Sue to get up in front. And you know, they did, and they were phenomenal. They were incredible. And we're going to be the biggest cheerleaders this year, urging each other out, getting groups of three or four or five. You don't have to necessarily know the person. But pray for them that God will speak to their hearts, that God will give them his plan. In Jesus' name, amen.